Hey, my name is Jamie, you're watching Ferg Vision, and today we're gonna be going over the 10 dumbest things for photo and video I've ever purchased on Amazon. And you might have bought them too, or you might have them in your cart. Don't, don't buy them. Don't do it. Check this video out. We're gonna show you. Let's hit it. So like a lot of us, for the past almost 10 years, I've had an Amazon Prime account. And over that time, I've ordered way too much stuff. The other day, I was thinking to myself that I really needed to stop buying so many stupid little photo and video accessories on Amazon. And I thought today I would go over the dumbest things I've ever purchased on Amazon for photo and video accessories and just things you should not buy. I would not recommend. Let me tell you, let me pull up my order here and Oh boy. All right, this is a good one actually. And it is a Speedlight sized mini softbox. They kind of look like this if you can see them on there. And they're a, a softbox with this tiny little opening on the front and then it's like a four by five softbox going out. And you attach them to a camera flash or a small LED light. And they just don't, they don't do anything. They don't really do anything. Personally, I actually prefer to do what I have uh, on a few of my lights that I'm shooting with now. I just take some parchment paper and some gaffer tape and tape some parchment paper or diffusion material over my lights. It's a lot better than using one of these chintzy soft boxes. They don't do anything. They just ruin your light and it looks no different and just cuts the light amount, but it's still just as harsh. So fuck these things, don't buy them. Just bounce your shots. If you can't bounce your shots, uh, get a Bowens mount attachment and get an actual mini softbox, something like that, something different, or use parchment paper. The next one is overhead lighting stands, reflectors, and cheap boom stands. Now, the one we're showing here, it's not even a specific company we wanna call out, we just wanna call out cheap plastic boom stands. One of the biggest problems we've had with them is that they, they do work for really light loads, like a reflector or something like that, but even light loads like that, after a few uses, the gear that holds the boom and angles the boom just tends to strip out when it's made of plastic. So get something with a metal gear to adjust the yoke, the boom, and you'll be a lot happier. It, it won't strip out. So even though they're cheap, they look like they're a great option. They're half the price of their counterparts that are all metal. They just simply don't work for the application, so they end up being a big waste of money. Yeah. Next one that we're gonna talk about is luckily something I don't see a lot, but it is a friction slider. These were really big back when I bought one in 2014, and it was terrible. I never got good results from it, and I almost immediately upgraded to a more professional slider. I think this about actually all sliders is just don't don't cheap out on a slider. There are some more affordable options now since I bought mine. Don't get a cheap slider, friction slider, or otherwise, just get a good quality slider because if it's not smooth, it's not worth it. Okay, I mean, I don't know if this will make the cut, but this was a big piece of shit. Next up on the list is chintzy phone mounts. If you'll see here, we kind of got a theme going with stabilization gear and this phone mount, this one, see it? It's a piece of shit. I've never used a worse phone mount. It was one of the first phone mounts I ever purchased. It just uses this little, I don't even know where it is. I think I threw it out. I think it, it, it haunted my dreams and I had to discard of it. It's such a terrible mount. I used to use it for filming weddings and there were multiple times where the phone just popped out while it was filming because the spring just gave out for some reason. I have no idea. I guess I just didn't put it in good enough. <sighs> Jesus. Next up on the list is cheap wireless for your flashes specifically, but really cheap wireless anything. So what we're talking about is this set that we ordered and we're sorry to single out the company because it's all cheap wireless sets. This is a $25 wireless flash trigger and it was absolute junk. Worked a little bit, enough that I could do like non-professional work with it. But anytime I tried to bring it out to a shoot where I was actually being paid, I ended up floundering and just setting up different lights. So don't buy cheap flash stuff. Get something like a Pocket Wizard or at least like a Young Neo because you're gonna be really disappointed with super cheap low-end stuff, especially stuff that attaches 
like through the shoe mount. What I would really recommend is to get a system where it doesn't actually have to have contact to be able to communicate with each other. It just has the built-in RF. You can get that through either Nikon or Canon branded flashes. Or again, you can go with a brand like Young Neo. We have a flash actually that they make. So spend a little bit more money, get a Canon, get an Icon, get something like this flagship Chinese flash from Young Neo, where it's got the RF built in and you can just get a transmitter that actually just just works and it doesn't have to be there. Yeah. Next up on the list is off-brand camera batteries. We know we're gonna get a lot of comments on this, so we're actually gonna explain it in two parts. And unfortunately, this battery has both parts wrong with it. Now, batteries can have one of two major problems in our opinion. The number one problem would be communication with the camera. Sometimes a manufacturer may make their battery smart for lack of a better term, the way it communicates with the camera to tell it how much is left and a few other functions might actually be very inconsistent on some off-brand camera batteries. For us, the worst is not just not communicating with the level, but telling us the wrong level. The battery meter feature reads full until it's almost empty, and then all of a sudden will just magically jump to empty. The next thing is, and I think it's also tied to this, is the battery capacity on a lot of these batteries is just really poor. There can be a number of things that'll happen to the battery from stability issues in different weather changes to just low capacity compared to the brand of battery that came with the camera. This can be really hard, especially when off-brand camera batteries can be half or even a quarter to a third of the price of on-brand camera batteries. So it's really almost a no-brainer, except once you get the batteries, they don't even serve the same purpose as the original battery you had. So it's sort of like the stands we talked about. It's a replacement, but it doesn't function the same way. So it's really not a replacement. So don't waste your money with cheap batteries. All right, here's a good one. These are always a piece of shit. Yeah. Next up on the list is battery adapters, but specifically a Sony NPF to AA battery adapter. It's an NPF sized battery casing that you can shove six AA's into, and they're horrible. Just get an NPF 970. These are stupid, and if you are using six double A's to equal that power, you're wasting your double A's. Just get two of these for $35 and you're good. There's no reason to use this. This is desperation. This is stupid, real stupid. I don't understand this. Two things here, when we tried them, they got about a quarter of the capacity when fully loaded of a regular NPF 970 and they weighed uh, more than a regular, nine, like twice as much as a regular NPF 970. And then you have to unload it and charge all the double A's when you're done instead of just charging one battery. There's no benefit unless you're so hard up and you just have a wall full of double A's and like your whole house is you can't, you can't stop tripping over double A's, I guess. I don't even know where it is anymore. I think I threw it out. It's useless. Yeah. Next up on the list, is knockoff and just cheap, shitty microphones. This is actually one that we bought where we were able to use it, realize how bad it was, and immediately return it. The specific microphone we're talking about was from a brand named Mookie, and it was a knockoff of the Rode Video Micro. We were hoping it would be a cheap way to get something that was non-powered to shove on top of our camera at all times, but the noise was just so bad on it that it was really honestly worse than the internal uh, microphone on my DSLR. So we returned it and we're using some other stuff that we have. Don't skimp out though. You don't wanna pay 10 or $15 for a microphone cause it's just, it's not gonna sound good. What you wanna do is buy a brand that other people have purchased before that they can confirm sounds decent Again, we're gonna link those below. Do not buy a $20 untested microphone unless you're just trying to find a great deal on your own. It's probably not gonna sound very good, like we found out, and you're probably gonna buy something else. Yeah. Now, this last product is another Amazon Basics products, and you'll see this is sort of a theme of things, but we're really disappointed that this product doesn't even live up to the standard of the product it's ripping off, which is sort of what Amazon has gotten really good at. Enter Amazon Gaff Tape. 
which we're actually still using now. That's gaffers tape or good duct tape for all the use and not in the know. And this is stuff I use almost daily in my studio and when I'm on shoots. And I think most of us use for attaching microphones, rigging up lighting, all sorts of things. Unfortunately, Amazon missed the mark by 10 degrees here. Their gaffer's tape is not very sticky, doesn't release well, or do much of the stuff besides being flexible that gaffer's tape is supposed to do. I'm actually using it on a few of the lights around me, but it's really substandard compared to the brand they're ripping off, which is, I believe, Gaff USA, there's Tape King, there's a few others that do it really well, and Amazon needs to fix their ripoffs. So, hey Amazon, rip off stuff better. I guess this is a good sign that I probably should be buying stuff from the company that makes the original and the one that I know that works, even if I might buy it on Amazon. If you guys have any thoughts on it, leave some comments below. If you've ever bought any of this stuff or if you were thinking about buying it, um, you're not gonna wanna buy any of this stuff on this list. I mean, you can do what you want, you know, uh, but I personally think most of the stuff on this list is just stuff where we get you know, almost thirst trap or gear acquisition syndrome acting up. And we just wanna buy stuff when we see it and we're like, that would be cool, that would fix my problem but it's not going to. We wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna know more about anything we talked about in the video, you can find links to everything in the description down below. My name is Jamie. You've been watching Ferg Vision, and remember, don't drink the Kool-Aid. We'll see you guys next time. Come get some dinner.